What's up everybody? Today we are going to talk about something called minimum volume covering ellipsoid and they use MVCE to shorten it. Okay. First of all, this is the mathematical description set definition of a ellipsoid. Here we can see correct rate of epsilon, right? And we need two parameters to define an ellipsoid, C and P, okay? Where C defines the center of a ellipsoid and P is the corresponding positive symmetric definite matrix and here this is the inverse of that p matrix right and this is one right and basically the problem i mean since the name is very descriptive but the problem is stated like that you are given a cluster of points in two-dimensional space of course i mean you can we are going to talk about that more and what we will learn is that we can easily find and find or solve the same problem for n dimensional cases all right so but for visualization purposes let's look at the two dimensional case right we are given a cluster of points right in 2d and what we need to find is to like draw an ellipsoid of course doesn't look like a great ellipsoid but such that okay this is an ellipsoid imagine that all right use your imagination such that the volume or in the two-dimensional case the surface area of that ellipsoid is minimized meaning we are required to find an ellipsoid that really tights the and followed like tightly covers all of those points okay and let me tell you, this problem can be transformed or reduced to a convex optimization problem. And that is, I mean, anytime you hear something like that, you should be, I mean, in your mind, right? You should be, oh, then it's easy, All right? Then it's perfect. You should say something like that, okay? All right. So how can we state the problem? First of all, if you, you know, search the internet and look at, search this problem specifically to get to find that the statement of the problem is given like that but i think intuitively what you will do i think you will only use determinant of p because the volume of the ellipsoid is proportional to the determinant of this given p matrix right okay so you would write this problem first in first step but then you would if you check this book right seven boyd convex optimization okay and there are some optimization problem equivalency type of subjects covered in this book and they are really important because it those type of informations let you do and let you transform the basically seemingly non-convex problems to convex problems okay yeah and in example 3.13 you get to see if g and g is a function g of x okay if g of x is concave all right that's one and positive okay then log of logarithm of g of x is also concave which kind of means if you have a objective function g of x and that function g of x is concave and positive right you can basically use logarithm of g of x you might say well i mean what's the purpose of this and i understand why you might why you think like that but you think like that till you see the benefit of doing that transformation okay and there i say till you see this problem okay because first it looks like a unnecessary and not a useful formula right okay but we are going to see how useful it is okay first of all determinant of p and again remember we are not talking about p is a matrix like all of the matrices no is a special type of matrix what kind of matrix symmetric 
and by n symmetric positive definite matrix all right and actually it's like a strictly also definite matrix right okay so which means and since determinant you can kind of think of it that way for example symmetric positive definite matrices have positive eigenvalues positive real eigenvalues okay and determinant of a matrix is kind of i mean if you take the eigenvalues of a matrix and multiplicate all of them right iteratively and right let's say for example we have lambda one or yeah right determinant of p is capital p like the multiplication operator of lambdas of that p matrix okay where lambda i is the lamb mean eigenvalue of eigenvalues of the p matrix okay so and if all the eigenvalues are positive and real and what would you get if you multiply a bunch of positive real numbers you get a positive number right okay so first thing checks out and concave determinant of a determinant of x is concave actually it's long con log logarithmic concave or or log concave which is a special type of con concavity right and of course at this point it we get to point where it is not intuitive it is a it is a something that you kind of need to learn from a book or right or if you are like a really optim optimization person right i feel like it is something that you need to memorize by heart okay all right so basically these are like initial problem and then we realize that determinant of p right is positive and concave therefore we can use we can we might as well use logarithm of determinant of p right and you again you can say okay but what is the purpose of it well the purpose of this operation is this log that right logarithm of determinant of x for example but some people say just log that right is a type of or wait a sec minus log that is a convex function okay and it is a um, information that you only find in like convex optimization books right it is like an info, inside information basically yeah so it is not intuitive okay optimization is not in generally is not intuitive like many i guess theorems or kind of transformation is not in, in, intuitive so if you think that hey i might be not smart person i mean i i don't find those informations intuitive okay you are not alone right all of us with you so don't worry about that anyway that was the initial point and then we did our we used that information that we find in Stephen Boyd comics optimization books right book and the very important book and now this is our initial problem okay all right and if you look at this problem especially that section it is not convex why we want to find c and p and here c and p uh, first of all it's like inverse right and it, it's not good at all right and also the something that we want to know or optimize uh, optimization variable and here and another optimization variable they appear like in bilinear form and not bilinear form actually like so it is not convex at all at this point you kind of know that right okay so but i said that was convex so there are going to be some manipulations that we are going to take advantage of and then we will come to the conclusion that yeah by using those manipulations the problem can be reduced to a convex optimization problem okay so we are going to go through each one of those manipulations algebraic manipulations okay so first one is q let's use this variable change okay 
and q is the inverse of p okay then you get this okay and all right i think that's right just look at this and look at this right we just change employ this variable change all right that's great and then if you look at this objective function let's try to you know apply some type of manipulations to see if we can get something more you know something that we are more familiar with right okay first of all this is the expression all right and since this and this they are equal right this is like a like algebra linear algebra formula right okay so okay we have this expression now all right and i mean one over a equals a to the minus one right we can just employ that information like basic math information and then what we have this and since log of a square or a x let's say is x times log a right like typical logarithm property and then we have this right minus and at this point you see minus log that okay minus log that is a convex function and i bet the only people that know are the kind of people that deal with optimization i mean uh, uh, seriously right okay and we have this expression now so this is our problem now we just reduce to that step again this is convex but here this term you know looks problematic right problematic so let's try to first of all change to that expression and you know get rid of those i terms to make it look you know um, easy on the eye right okay otherwise it's like it looks complicated okay and um, all right let's focus on this expression all right this is here right and if we expand this the left hand side of this you know inequality we get this i'm not going to go through each step like slowly like i usually do and all right this is what we have right and here is the magic i want to say this is the magic change of variables because no one can say yeah it's very intuitive no one can say that okay and to be honest with you i feel like none of the change of variables they people usually employ right and in optimization like edmi type of problems for example i i remember i mean to be honest with you even the like we even the state feedback problem right we have x dot equals a wait a sec a x plus b u right and we want to find u equals a times x right do you remember that we use i mean in an of itself it is not convex right because by linear term appearing right but we use some type of variable change and then we convert it to a convex optimization problem and to be honest with you even that wasn't obvious to me right and people in control of course control and optimization like the overlapping region even people say yeah that looks really obvious and even that wasn't obvious to me so what i'm trying to say is that these type of variable changes are not obvious so don't be so hard on yourself i guess okay all right so if we use that change of variables here this is what we have okay you can you know check the math and again quick reminder i am going to upload a documentation for what i explained here in more detail by the way all right and you can download the pdf file and also docx right you can download the pdf file from the github link that is given in the description section down below okay so all right all right so if you you know find my voice annoying which yeah, i would agree with you and you can check that pdf file all right so here since this expression again not that obvious you can you know all right what i'm going to say 
since this expression is equal to that expression, right? And at this point, I want to stop. I want to stop. And I would suggest you to expand this expression and then see for yourself that is really equal to that long expression, okay? With one, two, and three terms, all right? And since this is like norm squared, like transpose time, you know, x transpose, you know, x transpose x equals this, right? This is all right. And since we employ that, this is what we have. And at this point, this is affine in A and B, you know, A matrix and B vector, since this is affine in A and B. And this is a norm, right? Norm squared. And um, basically, this is convex. All right. And this is a great news, by the way. Okay. So, due to our change of variables, we have A transpose A instead of Q. Okay. And this is our problem. And of course, I need to write B and A at this point. Okay. And this objective function, right, this expression can, I mean, we can do something for that. Okay. Let's look at this minus log that of A transpose A, okay, like Gramian. Okay. And look at the determinant of A transpose A here. First of all, since we recall that A times B equals that A times that B, right? I forgot the name of that property, like isomorphism or something. I, I, I mean, let, let, I don't want to, you know, confuse you. Of, since I myself don't know, like, exactly, okay? All right? I don't want to you know make you think that i am a math person or i have a strong background in like group theory or something okay i don't right little i mean i mean so seriously few people have okay all right anyway so this is this can be written like this right due to that general expression identity and since Determinant of A transpose equal to determinant of A. Why you might want to know that or how, I mean, which knowledge that you can take advantage of to come to the conclusion that this equality is correct. I mean, I would, wa I would say eigenvalues of A matrices and eigenvalues of A transpose, they are the same, okay? And since that determinant is the multiplication of all those eigenvalues right so right this is something yeah that makes sense you, you should be like that if you again if you know the eigenvalues of a equals to or the set of eigenvalues of a you know that set is equivalent to the set of is equal to the set of a transpose okay Wait a second. What did I say? Set of set of eigenvalues of A is equal to the set of eigenvalues of A transpose. Okay, All right. This is the correct version. All right, and by using those two information, we can write this identity or equality, right? And then finally, this was our origin of objective term, and then we can write it like this. And since okay, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. So let's write it, okay? This problem is equivalent to this or can be transformed to this. And since, I mean, this is like minus two or I mean two times, right? This is like a scale of multiplicative, right? So we can get rid of that and we can, I mean, that problem and that problem since objective is scaled by, you know, constant and positive constant and those two problems are equivalent okay and at this point it is great at this point it's great because it this problem is screaming hey i am convex solve me right all right and here let's write the wait a second let me let me just finally show you this is the final version final version and this is the change of variables okay change of variables and that we employed to transform this problem to this convex problem all right so 
Okay, I think it should be a good time to, you know, go back to MATLAB and look at an example, all right? Let me just press, okay, wait a sec, where is that? Okay, all right, so wait a sec. You need to look at this and then we are going to plot the results, all right? So maybe I should do something like this, okay? Yeah, it is like 30 lines of code and there are a lot of empty spaces. You get the point. Okay, let's run it. Again, you need Mosec and Yolmip toolboxes, all right? So first of all, what I'm trying to do is I'm just generating center X, center X and center Y, okay? And then generating a bunch of X and Y random points. And then, you know, they, I'm basically shifting them. I'm basically shifting the um, center of that cluster of points that we have here. Those are the, like, cluster of points. And since this is, like, we are interested in 2D, right? We have X and Y, right? Dimensions. All right. So let's plot them. Okay. Here we have a cluster of, you know, black points, black dots. All right. So let's solve that problem. Let's solve that problem. Let me get rid of this. Okay. Control S. And before I do anything, let me go back to the tablet to, you know, one last time to show you. Okay. I want you to keep this expression in mind. Okay. First of all, minus log that A. Okay. This is our objective. All right. That's great. And by the way, log that is a type of function that is very useful and known and popular right so that your mip has log that function you don't need to even do like log of that of a or something you just you can use log that all right and all right and this here norm of norm square of ax plus b okay just try to keep that in mind and let's go back to matlab all right here so what we want to find is a and b a is a matrix and since we are in two dimension two by two right and b is two having two dimensional vector right okay so this is again for loop okay we are going to i guess stack those constraints on top of each other all right and n capital n kind of you know constraints that we have okay here this is basically norm squared of norm squared of and of course you can write norm right anyway i don't want to confuse you norm squared of and wait a sec let me do something write this this is norm this is norm okay and this is norm squared okay norm of what norm of ax a, this is ax this is ax okay because the x that we were using is two-dimensional object right okay please don't get confused by that ax plus b okay all right that's great so and here this is our stp solver and this is our objective function what was that minus log that okay let's run it it's gonna take like one two three seconds or something maybe maybe more than that because it, if you look at this here we have 1000 points right say successful sort and at this point you need to say wow it's great right you should be you know take advantage of that little happy moments of life and then that was the change of variables and I don't want to explain how I did that. I use F impl implicit to draw that ellipse and then I draw the our origin of like cluster of points. Alright, let's look at that. Let's look at that here. This is the ellipse in origin, central at the origin. Okay, zero zero. If you look at this, you can see that. <coughs> and then by shifting by using C, right? C here. Where is that C? Yeah, C here. Here's a C. Okay. So maybe let's not plot that. Okay. Let's look at that. 
yeah here you can see and here there are a couple of points located on the boundary of the ellipse right so this is and that is a type of indication that you kind of solve the problem okay you have made any mistakes about that all right that's it and thanks for watching